Hey, everybody. I'm so happy that uh, you've all been able to join us. Uh, this is an exciting panel. We've got a wonderful and amazing group of people to kind of impress you, hopefully, with uh, some new ideas, new ways of working, and uh, new ways we can approach the issue of gender, inclusion, and innovation. But first, while we wait for everybody to kind of file in, we want to play a video for you about the WISTIS Forum 2021 activities. They have been many and they have been awesome. Uh, so that video should play now. The World Summit on the Information Society 2021 has begun and is off to an exciting start. Having already hosted several workshops and sessions since the forum's launch in January, as well as receiving a record number of submissions for the WISIS prizes, with 1,270 projects submitted. As the forum progresses, we encourage stakeholders to keep an eye out on our interactive agenda for announcements about exciting workshops and our various ICT for development related special tracks, many of which have already been inaugurated successfully, such as the ICTs and Gender Mainstreaming track, the ICTs for Wellbeing and Happiness track, the ICTs and Accessibility for Persons with Disabilities and Specific Needs track, as well as the ICT and Older Persons track, and the Cybersecurity track. In addition, we're pleased to have opened our high-level track on March 22nd, which featured the appointment of the 2021 WISIS Forum Chairman. The high-level policy sessions featured during the high-level track are moderated by high-level track facilitators nominated by the WISIS stakeholders during the open consultation process. These sessions will gather over 100 high-ranking officials of the WISIS stakeholder community, with 35 ministers, deputies, and ambassadors, and more than 30 heads of regulatory bodies, private sector, civil society, academia, and the technical community. Other exciting tracks will be opening soon all of which you can find more information about on our interactive agenda and website. In addition to these exciting tracks, building on the title of this year's forum, ICTs for Inclusive, Resilient, and Sustainable Societies and Economies, we're hosting a series of related workshops showcasing the work of our stakeholders, including our series of bi-weekly workshops which demonstrate how our stakeholders used ICTs to respond to the coronavirus pandemic. The work of our stakeholders is also displayed on our virtual exhibition space that was inaugurated on March 15th. Various other networking and social events will also be integrated into the forum, with meet and greet opportunities and frequent social media posts and engagements, as well as engagements during internationally recognized UN days and weeks. In addition, with more than a thousand registered participants, the Aging Better with ICT's hackathon is still live. Hackers had the opportunity to meet with experts in the field of ICTs and aging during the three mentorship sessions featured. Submission phase will end on the 18th of April. Stay tuned for announcements of the four winners on May 17th during the final week of the 2021 WISIS Forum. In addition to this exciting hackathon, we're pleased to announce that the WISIS Forum special track on ICTs and older persons will be initiating a special prize this year entitled the WISIS Healthy Aging Innovation Prize, with more information available on our website. We look forward to your participation and thank stakeholders for their contribution in shaping this year's WISIS Forum with commitment and ongoing support. We received more than 500 inputs and suggestions from stakeholders worldwide to shape the agenda and program of the 2021 WISIS Forum during virtual discussions and direct official submissions to the open consultation process. We are delighted to see well-balanced contributions in terms of geographical location, gender balance, and stakeholder type, which has shown the positive commitment towards the WISIS process and the strengthening of the WISIS implementation of activities to achieve the sustainable development goals. We would also like to extend a warm thank you to our partners, without whom this forum would not be possible. Thank you, and we look forward to a successful 2021 WISIS Forum. Awesome. Thank you so much, WISIS, for that uh, video that highlights some of the excellence that happens at this forum. And uh, I'm proud to say that this workshop is uh, an example of some of that excellence because we have for you today a really unique blend of stakeholders, grassroots advocates, as well as high level uh, people who operate at a, on a policy level. And so it's a real honor and a privilege of mine to be able to present this work, to be able to kind of moderate and, and lead this kind of work, because it's always been a dream of mine to actually uh, be able to connect with the grassroots as well as the top down levels. And this workshop is centered on a very specific project called Equals EU. Now this is a uh, EU funded, Horizon 2020 funded project uh, that focuses on three key issues, gender, inclusion, 
and innovation. And it takes a very grassroots approach to capacity building. So we're not operating so much at the high level looking down, but we're really looking at the grassroots up. And this gives us a key opportunity to activate new, uh, new uh, participants, new stakeholders in this issue of gender inclusive innovation. Now, uh, I wouldn't be uh, uh, selling this appropriately if I didn't acknowledge the amazing work being done on a global level with the Equals Global Partnership. So Equals EU, we can kind of think of as a regional development project within this broader Equals Global Partnership. And if you're interested in this kind of work, please check out their website at equals.org. And uh, I'm going to turn now to our first uh, panelist, and that person is Helena Rogna, and she's going to kind of take you on a brief journey about what Equals EU is all about. Yes, thank you, Anthony. I am the project coordinator for Equals EU, so I'm going to quickly speak about our key concepts and activities. So. There are two key concepts that underpin Equals EU, gender equity and social innovation. Equals EU has an explicit focus on gender equity and distinguishes it from gender equality. Because giving everyone the same thing only works if everyone starts from the same place. This is why it's important to give access to the same opportunities first. We have to focus on equity first before we can enjoy equality. At Equals EU, we want to break gender stereotypes, in particular in innovation and entrepreneurship. The project helps eliminate gender bias by directly integrating and raising the profile of women and girls as leaders in social innovation and entrepreneurship. We think that global partnership is key. An Equals EU consortium consists of 19 organizations from a wide variety of sectors. Together with external partners, the Equals EU scope of activities is conducted in 37 European and non-European countries. Our mission is to provide women and young girls with the support they need to be successful. History has shown us how women have been excluded as well as undermined from many fields, such as science, mathematics, and technology. And through developing hands-on activities, seminars, mentoring sessions, and gender inclusive and innovative tools, we want to inspire the next generation of women innovators. We at Equals EU care and want to give women and young girls the opportunity that they might not have otherwise. Because when there is change, there is opportunity. Our focus is on innovation in addressing and solving societal ch challenges. Our goal is to create smart, sustainable, and inclusive innovation ecosystems by building capacity and expanding networks for women and girls in social innovation and entrepreneurship. Digital inclusion is key to providing new pathways and solutions for ensuring that women and girls can participate in the entire sphere of economic, social, political, and cultural life. And Equals EU is centered around four key activities that leverage expertise from global leaders in gender inclusive innovation with commitment to future female leaders. The four key activities are mapping gender inclusive innovation ecosystems in over 20 countries, hosting innovation camps and hackathons in over 25 countries, running a six month incubator program focused on gender inclusive entrepreneurship, and four, holding a one month boot camp for future leaders in gender inclusive innovation. Equals EU is committed to the UN Global Solidarity Movement for Gender Equality. Gender equality is not just a women's issue. It's a human rights issue. And on that note, I want to introduce the amazing Caroline and Brigitta, who is leading the first key activity, which is mapping gender inclusive innovation.
thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, okay. Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate the uh, opportunity to present our part in Equals EU at this conference. My name is Birgitta Riedhagen. I work together with Caroline Wamala Larson at Stockholm University Spider Center. And our um, activity in Equals EU is to appraise gender equity in social and digital innovation. Birgitta, yes. you can't see the slides. You can't see it? Uh, no. No, why not? You are screen sharing. You share. I'm trying to. Oh, you're seeing this one. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think so you might need to do, to do another uh, sharing. Brigitte. Yes. Now. Now, yeah. now it's good. Yes. Well, you see our names here, but that was Perfect. all the information that I just said. So no big loss. Um, you see if I can change slide. I can. Our activity is the first one in Equals EU and we are doing a survey of existing actors and networks within social and digital innovation addressing gender equity within their activities, be they incubators, tech startups, research institutes, public offices or other businesses. And we're doing this with a questionnaire distributed in all the partner countries that uh, were presented before at a wide number of partners and countries. Um, because whenever you start a big program like this, we first need to know who is already out there working with these issues, gender equity in innovation, how do they work, with whom do they work, and bear in mind that it has to do both with gender equality at the workplace and how gender relevance is included in products and services that they work with, these innovators. Thank you so much. And uh, after this exercise of collecting and uh, all this data across uh, different uh, countries in, in the EU and some associate countries, what we hope to have as uh, some key outputs or deliverables is that we will add to the pool of tools out there that are measuring gender equity and inclusion, um, because we do recognize that while women um, are include, included, their voice needs to take center stage. We need to increase their visibility. Um, and we're really happy to be doing this through the mapping process. So as has already been alluded, we will be mapping networks and collaborations across the EU and, and associate countries that are championing gender inclusive innovation processes. And already from some, um, uh, some of the themes coming or data coming through the pilot survey, we have a few there to the right of the screen that you can see uh, that are coming up from, um, from the pilot survey thus far. There are already some exciting initiatives out there um, next slide, please. Um, and uh, other key outputs is uh, we will compile uh, country specific findings on gender equity in social and digital innovations and uh, hope that this compendium would uh, inform policy um, and also highlight some of the products out there, the services um, that have actually, you know, worked with gender equity uh, through the production design and eventual output. Um, and this will be across 22 countries, as we've said, 20 countries and two, uh, 20 countries in the EU and two um, associate countries. Next slide, please. Unmute, Begita. Sorry again. Uh, our activity also feeds into the coming activities that we will hear more about very soon. Uh, we want to provide a list of relevant partners for those activities that are planned. Uh, we will show a growing network of similar minded that our ac actors can collaborate with across Europe and also outside. And of course, for the future, even after Equals EU, future EU initiatives will also have access to our list of partners 
that are working with gender equity in social and digital innovation. So we thank you for this and we are very uh, willing to take questions or contacts afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you uh, both Birgitta and Caroline. It's so nice to see this amazing work get kicked off at a, with a really, really strong start. And I just want to encourage everyone out there, look for this compendium that later on this year. It's going to be a game changer for understanding what's working and what's not in a whole bunch of different countries, over 21 different countries. I mean, that level of, a, of a review is considerable. And there's a lot of effort from our end that's going going into making that as easy to understand and easy to bring lessons and takeaways from that as possible and to making those country level comparisons. So you can look at your neighbors, you can look at the folks down the street and say, okay, where am I stacking up against them? How can I improve my work here at home? So thank you, Caroline and Birgitta. Excellent, excellent work. Now I have the pleasure and honor to uh, introduce Manon. Uh, Manon is leading, leading our second key uh, work activity and Manon I believe you're on the line there yes, you I, are I am so Manon I turn it over to you uh, and you can tell us all about the wonderful work you guys are doing yes we would we would be two voice to two voices to present that uh, first thank you uh, Brigitte Caroline and Helen it's uh, so inspirational to hear you uh, inspirational sorry to hear you speak about your activities as well um, so I will leave uh, uh, Maria Del go a bit deeper in the in the details uh, but uh, at Mission Creek, so we are coordinating the, the co-creation activities, uh, new solution co-creation. So it's, it's kind of uh, uh, the part that is more concrete and practical of our project. Uh, so it's about technological solution, but also policy solutions. Um, so we are going to co-create uh, with also these wonderful consortium partners, a uh, new solution for gender equity and digital inclusion to make sure that our work at Equal is also uh, uh, is uh, exploited that we really uh, built um, uh, built uh, uh, capacities, especially uh, for women and girls in tech. So we let uh, we let uh, Maria Del go a bit deeper, and then Maria Del, are you able to? Speak? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, by doing that, we are concretely uh, coordinating hackathons and innovation innovation camps in twenty four countries. Uh, with the consortium, so we will have an uh, innovation camp. We are, which are about uh, policy solution and hackathon, which are about technology, technological and policy solution. Um, these are the concrete approach of the project because uh, we will work with students and uh, people in tech, with uh, with teams which are um, which are composed in accord in accordance with equity. So diversity, inclusion, and no discrimination uh, within the team. Uh, how does our work create value? Uh, we are creating a, sh a shared common spirit on this event around gender equity and digital inclusion by giving the same rules to everybody. And we are also creating unique new solution to issues specific to the host institution, because we are aware that each country, each institution has its own reality we want to adapt what means equity to the country, to, to the institution, and to their challenge. Um, we want to use this project as a way to do collaboration and collective intelligence and skill complementarity between and within the consortium by using the experience of each of our partners, university, uh, association, um, teams, and agency, to work together and to find inspiration between us. I will let Manu finish uh, this part. Yeah, so to be <laughs> what, what uh, oh, there is an echo. Oh, it's better now, okay. <laughs> so to complete what Maria Del uh, just said, so all these activities, these hackathons and uh, innovation comes uh, really allows to build capacity, uh, especially for, uh, again, for women and girls in tech and also to raise a one awareness around specific issues um, that uh, different uh, countries uh, so not only European countries, but as uh, uh, Elin uh, mentioned also in, in the introduction, also non-European countries. Uh, so what are the specific issues they face around uh, gender equity and digital inclusion? And what do we hope to come out with, uh, with our activities? Uh, is really, so I'm not going to, to repeat, but uh, I think 
uh, uh, what Helen said about uh, developing smart uh, sustainable uh, equity solutions uh, is very important. So that's the goal indeed of, of our activities. Um, so we want to develop new solutions that emerge uh, from the, hack the hackathon and innovation camps uh, on the long term and not only uh, 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 on the time that, uh, uh, not only during our activities specifically, but also on the long term. So even after uh, this project is, do is done, uh, new solutions will be uh, implemented and will continue to exist. So that's very important. Um, and uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's mostly what we hope to come out with. Uh, capacities and uh, long-term solutions for gender equity and digital inclusion. So I'm going to stop there uh, and happy to take all your questions from the attendees. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Manon, and thank you so much, Marie. It's it's really encouraging to see how we can use these kind of industry techniques, these hackathons and these innovation camps to activate young people at the grassroots who are really just coming into their professional careers and help accelerate what they want to do, really connect why they exist with what they want to do and make gender inclusion a key element of that. And I think this specific activity represents uh, a pivotal moment in this project. Uh, all these events are going to be held early next year. And so it's an opportunity for, for anyone to kind of get involved in this work, to realize their ambitions as a future innovator and an entrepreneur, but to do it uh, with a gender lens to the entire process. So you guys are going to be kicking off some really, really exciting uh, work here in the new year, here in 2022, and I can't wait to see what we get into. So that's very, very encouraging. Uh, I just want to uh, invite the attendees at any point in time, if you have questions or you just want to make a comment or you want to just cheer everyone on that's doing this work, throw something into the Q&A and just let us know how we're doing. Uh, we would love to hear from you. What do you think it might be working with what we do? What do you think could be improved? Because this is a long-term project. So there's always opportunities to kind of steer the ship a little bit. So I would love to hear from you. I would love to get your insights. You guys are all experts in your own right, and uh, we value what you have to, to say. Now we got a next uh, uh, great group of people cooking up here, and that is our uh, activity number three. And so I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, Regant and his colleague, Anne, who are going to present that piece of work. Hi, yes, my colleague Anne will show the slides. Thank you, Anne. Hi, I'm uh, Rigon, and uh, today, together with my colleague Anne, we are representing the we are pre representing the Global Universal Design Commission in Europe (GUDC). We are located in Norway, and it is a pleasure to be here today to present the work activities that we do in the Equal CU project. First and foremost, I would like to address a gap. There is a gap between men's and women's participation in entrepreneurship, and men still dominate the gender balance in the ICT sector. To improve this current status, our work in this project is aimed at getting more women as business owners. We focus on expanding opportunities for women and girls to become social innovators and entrepreneurs. We promote gender equality and digital inclusion. Through an incubator program, followed up by, professional, by a professional network spin-off, by providing strategic advice and guidance, and by catalyzing commercial growth, we will work together towards creating a lasting social impact, where the results are going to be the birth of 24 new women-led startups. If we don't make an active effort to change this anytime soon, we will still lack a gender balance far into the future. Statistically speaking, at this pace, based on current trends, it will take us 202 years to close this gender gap in economic participation and economy. And so this is why we should strive to change this. And now I would, uh, it, it's a pleasure to, to, to turn to my colleague Anne and she will elaborate on how we are going to tackle this. Thank you and feel free to, uh, to ask the, any questions if you have to. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Regant. So 
The activities that we are leading all works on transforming gender inequity into sustainable social impact and are uh, collaborative efforts. Through partnerships with six of the other concession partners, the Equals Global Partnership and UN Women, the activities provide strategic advice and guidance and catalyze commercial growth and social impact for the 24 women-led startups. We are talking about 72 social entrepreneurs that will run 24 startups from 24 countries. By equipping these women working in the startups with the tools and knowledge necessary to run their businesses sustainably, the long-term goal is to foster a new wave of women, entrepreneurs, and women-led companies. Through the project period, the 24 startups will go from an idea to a product or service. This development will be supported by the incubator program that will run for six months and it's to begin later this year. During the program, workshops and mentoring sessions will enable these startups to get hands-on business development training that will empower them to develop their work further. The incubator program will spur a network amongst the women, their mentors and the partners that will be kept alive through a spin-off network. The network will expand and build off the Equals Global Hub and seven other European networks while differentiating itself through this focus on relevant work streams for Europe, including social entrepreneurship and innovation, STEM and power skills, and women's leadership skills in, in the ICT sector. The network will also work towards creating a space where the exchange of knowledge, support, and ideas on successful entrepreneurship will be the core values in addition to the relevant work stream that I just mentioned. The thing is that our efforts don't matter if we are only working hard on this for the three years and just leaving it behind when the project is over. So, to secure that what we do now and during this project get a longer lifespan and are creating waves, hopefully far into the future, the professional network will be the anchor to keep the change alive and sustained for generations of women to come. Through the consortium members, we'll explore the possibility of creating several regional offices that where the network can become a place to meet where we are allowed to do that again and that we can also create a digital space where we can run um, competency development initiatives that can all lead to new uh, initiatives and changes so that the network members can participate in the initiatives no matter if they're at the site or if they are participating through the digital channels. Our hopes and ambition for all the professional network are that some startups can continue to create an impact by maybe opening up trainee positions or work positions for the younger generations of female entrepreneurs or other members in the network. So that it does not take us 202 years to finally be able to close the gender gap in economic participation and economy. I am personally tired of using my smartphone, which was most likely both built and designed by men. With a much larger like screen and everything, I constantly lose my phone, maybe once a day. And I know that this is a super small issue in the big scope and in the big picture. But what I'm trying to say is that I personally don't have 202 years available to wait for that perfect phone or for this gender equality. So our most important mission is to ensure that women are sooner rather than later participating on equal terms as men. And I think one of the ways we can do this is through these measures and initiatives that, they, that we will work on. I'd also like to add that the work that we do is not a, an activity solely run by us. I would also like to both acknowledge and give the deserved attention and credit to our lovely partners. Our partners are both private and public sectors. They represent six different countries and we would not be able to do all the things we do without their continued support. In addition to the partnerships that we have with Equals U Global Network and UN Women. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions or suggestions of how we can not wait 202 years for a change to happen, please hit us up. Thank you. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Anne. Let's go. Grab Thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to say all those things and uh, highlighting the urgency 
of this issue. Uh, I, none of us want to wait 202 years. Uh, that's certainly not something that uh, we can afford as a society to continue to exclude half the population from so many aspects of our life, our, our daily life. And so what I love about your activity is that it's uh, it, you're, we're kind of putting the pedal to the metal. So with what Marie and Manon are doing, they're going to get us started with this group of young entrepreneurs who are coming up with new ideas, new ways of shaping the world we live in. And you guys are accelerating their growth. You're basically taking and putting, putting them into a, an incubator program that is designed to produce new initiatives, new businesses, new NGOs, new startups that can go forward and take some of the ideas that we're trying to tackle some of the uh, issues that we're trying to resolve and moving that forward at an accelerated pace. So uh, I would argue, Anne, that the work that you guys are going to be doing is critical for taking that 202 years down uh, quite a bit. Uh, and I think that's going to be a really exciting thing, thing to see next year. Uh, again, we all uh, can't wait to come back for WISIS 2022 and see what you've cooked up. Uh, so I would love to turn now to another uh, friend and colleague, Tamara Doncheva. Uh, Tamara works at GSMA, and she is leading our fourth activity, which is kind of a culmination of a lot of different things we've already talked about. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. It's a pleasure to be here with you and uh, with everyone else who was able to join us today. Um, I'm particularly pleased um, to be with you today because, as you know, tomorrow we mark the 10th year anniversary of International Girls in ICT Day. Um, so I think it's actually very fitting that we are discussing, you know, how do we empower women uh, in the digital economy as agents of change, as creators. Uh, we know this year's theme is uh, Connected Girls and Creating Brighter Futures. And this cannot be a better fit for, for GSMA's mission, which is actually um, the only private sector member um, as part of this project um, and as part of the 19 partners. Um, and so we represent the global mobile industry uniting more than 750 mobile operators and 400 companies from across the mobile um, ecosystem. So before I really dive into the core of our work, um, which is really about uh, exchanging knowledge and transfer technology for gender equity in professional development, I really want to spend a little bit of time to um, share with you why this is important um, and why actually the role of the private sector um, is critical um, and why we need to work with the public sector in, all, in order to solve um, some of the challenges that my colleagues um, shared with you um, earlier. Uh, I think we know that uh, um, you know, digital gender equality can only be achieved when girls and young women uh, first have access to ICTs and the internet, then they have skills to use them, and then they have the opportunities to progress to leadership positions in the tech industry. Um, and so uh, I want to emphasize that actually the private sector is particularly well suited to apply creativity, innovation, and resources to deploy connectivity solutions and services um, on global scale and actually bridge this digital gender gap. Um, just to give you an example from the mobile industry, um, mobile technology alone is achieving that scale uh, because we are connecting 3.8 billion people to the internet worldwide. Um, so I think, you know, we as mobile industry certainly realize the economic and social benefits um, that connecting women and girls to mobile technology has for increasing female leadership and representation in the ICT industry. Um, and this is precisely the kind of expertise uh, we are going to leverage and we are bringing to this project um, because building the capacity of emerging female talent is critical for closing the gender gap in social innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, and we also uh, hold a very special role um, in um, the Equals Global Partnership, uh, which my colleagues referred to earlier um, and under which the Equals EU regional network sits. That partnership is the only one um, that brings the public and private sector um, to bridge the digital gender gap. Uh, and it was actually co-founded by GSMA. Uh, and over the past two years, we've had the privilege uh, of leading the important work of Equals as chair of its steering committee. So for us, this project really speaks um, to the core of our commitment to the Equals Global Partnership, because as I mentioned, bridging the public and private sectors together is critical. 
if we are really going to achieve momentum and build the next generation of female digital talent. Now, what are we hoping to achieve uh, as part of our work, which will stem over the next three years? As I mentioned at the core is really leveraging our expertise in providing gender inclusive capacity building training. Um, and therefore I think we are uniquely positioned to equip women to become agents of change. Now, how are we going to achieve this? Um, as you heard uh, again from my colleagues, uh, we are hoping to shape the future of 24 female young leaders by designing capacity building courses, which speak to their professional development needs. Now, of course, we're not going to be doing this alone. Uh, we will be doing this in partnership uh, with uh, some of the colleagues um, with us today and the rest of the partners which form this important uh, consortium. By um, incubating these women into 24 startups through a very rigorous STEM education and professional development plan, which focuses on three different areas. And these are precisely the areas around which the capacity building courses are going to focus as well. Those are women's digital rights, transformational leadership, um, and STI skills, standing for science and technology innovation skills. And through these efforts, we genuinely believe that um, the Equals EU project is going to um, increase uh, 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 partic larger participation uh, of women and girls in the ICT sectors, not just as users, but as we mentioned earlier, as developers, leaders, and decision makers. Now, um, those uh, young women are going to be further shaped by not just, of course, providing them with this very critical um, knowledge um, and capacity building, but they're also going to be enrolled in an international summer school and professional development boot camp, which will further elevate their skills. Um, I think this is critical because we cannot look into these um, uh, educational efforts in um, isolation, right? We want to ensure that um, these leaders are going to take uh, what they will learn and apply them uh, through, through the summer schools and through these um, boot camps. Now, those are going to be held in three different countries where our partners are based. Those are the Ukraine, Switzerland, and Spain. And the summer school um, is intended to consist of three one-week professional development boot camps which of course are going to be based on the capacity development courses I just mentioned. Now I'm cautious of time um, and I want to conclude by actually um, announcing our first very exciting public facing activity. On the 4th of August, we are going to um, host a um, colloquial meeting, which is going to bring together civil society, academia, mobile industry, of course, tech industry and international organizations to really generate discussions around, on the one hand, how can we foster educational cooperation and collaboration between all of these stakeholders so that we generate more informed policymaking around some of these issues? And then on the other hand, how do we dispel stereotypes and foster gender inclusive innovation ecosystem um, there by which of course, and around um, key traits and skills which are needed to empower women in the digital age. And here, I'm actually very happy um, that um, at the core of the team for the meeting, we are going to be looking into perceptions of power um, around um, female leadership. Um, and this work actually stems from a previous research, which was undertaken by GSMA and also Metropolitan University, among other partners. Because one of the really unique and interesting outcomes of this uh, study pointed to the fact that women are actually, to a greater extent, more of transformational leaders than men, particularly in, in the mobile and tech industry. So we are hoping that um, we will take away some of these results and, and really drive this, this message and drive discussions around how do we build women as transformational leaders? Um, because as we mentioned at the end of the day, it's not just about building the talent pipeline, but it's also about retaining it. Um, and so I do hope that uh, some of you will be able to follow the discussions on the 4th of August. Um, the event will be live streamed on the Equals EU Facebook channel um, and further details will be announced um, on the 4th of May on the Equals EU website, uh, which, of which I'll share a link um, shortly. Thank you so much and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tamara. That's phenomenal. And uh, 
your activity gets me so excited because uh, it's exactly what you just said. Uh, women are transformational leaders. So we're going to be taking these uh, this group of people who have gone through that journey. And let, let's remember how this journey started, right? So Caroline talked about how we're going to kind of canvas all these different countries to understand who are the key actors, what are they doing, what are the innovations coming out of their uh, local contexts. Then Maria Manon talked about how they're going to run all of these hackers hackathons and in innovation camps to really create this grassroots surge of people championing gender inclusion and innovation. And then Anne and Raygon talked about how we're going to take that, incubate those teams to become startups. And then we see that your activity is focused now on taking the leaders within those teams and elevating their profiles, continuing to develop them into the leaders of tomorrow. And I think that's such a, uh, an amazing gift that you're going to be bringing us uh, in the coming years. I also want to highlight what you had said about the August 4th event. It's a critical opportunity to learn more about what's happening in this gender inclusion space to, again, kind of get involved with some of the work that we're doing. And you mentioned the, that we would be live streaming it to Facebook. And I want to encourage everyone, Equals EU is all over social media. You can catch us on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, you name it. Uh, and uh, the person responsible for that is actually our next presenter. Uh, Borut and Victoria are going to help us understand how we're taking all of this wonderful work and we're taking this into the public space. So we're going to be putting it out there so that everyone can take advantage and understand the benefits, the opportunities, the value of what we've created. So Borut, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Antti, uh, for the introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Borut Tink. I come from All Digital, and we are leading communication dissemination and exploitation activity clusters uh, in the equals in the equals EU. In this short presentation, I'll try to uh, answer two three questions: uh, Why is this relevant? Uh, what do we do with it? And how do we do it? Uh, and I'm sure more can follow uh, today or a different other activity. So first, why do we do it? You all know uh, this, uh, this visual, this photo, the three monkeys uh, can talk. I, I don't want to talk. I don't see. I don't hear. And I think it pretty nicely illustrates uh, what we are not uh, trying to do uh, and, and what is not supposed to, uh, uh, to be doing in any of the project, not just ours. So we would like to be interconnected with different, with different stakeholders, with different sister projects, with different initiatives, institutions, companies. You heard uh, a plethora of target groups that we will be working with and for in, in the next three years. And uh, one of the key one of the one of the key um, missions that we have in the communication is building bridges toward these stakeholders, and of course, um, creating enabling the creation of impact of everything that our colleagues uh, uh, will be developing in, in the key activity clusters. And so, yeah, this is completely wrong. We go way beyond that, and uh, it's not all, all only us. Um, um, communicating out, but also getting the information in. So we want to hear, we want to understand, and we want to build uh, build uh, collaboration and partnerships uh, that will uh, exploit uh, and use uh, the tools and, and, and materials produced in the project. If we go, how does our work create value? I have four four key uh, four key concepts uh, that uh, we will be following in our communication dissemination exploitation activities. First one is transparency, and it's not only about transparency in terms of showing what us to do, but also communicating what to do. Here we have two basic principles. One is we are uh, accountable for the work we are doing because uh, we've been uh, we got a grant from Horizon 2020 project. So uh, this is uh, uh, European citizens tax money and we are accountable to them to show uh, to show them what we did uh, with the with the money available and how we did it. But it's also about communicating in general about not only the project activities, but also the topics we are uh, we are uh, we are addressing gender inequality, gender equality, gender equity. So uh, on one hand, we raise awareness about the topic and would like to contribute uh, to to numerous activities and, and initiatives uh, run on from local to global level that are contributing to this and also inform about the project results. 
Then the next two key concepts are dissemination and exploitation. When we talk about dissemination, we talk about informing uh, and, and, and engaging with key target groups uh, that, uh, that relate, correspond to the, uh, to the uh, project results that we are developing. So on one hand is the future leaders, future female leaders. On the other hand is policy, uh, is policy makers and decision makers. On the third level, there are other academics uh, and, and educational institutions. So informing them about what we are doing and how we are doing, very targeted. So we know, uh, we, we, we make sure that those that we identify as key audiences that we want to present our results to are actually reached. And then the next level is the exploitation, how, uh, which means how our project results are going to be used. So this is then the next step where we want to uh, then create, uh, uh, where we want to engage and involve with, with these target groups and make sure that uh, what we will develop in the three years and what will then continue will be used way past the uh, project timeline. And then the, the fourth key concept is the interaction, um, which, which then means uh, kind of uh, incorporates or, or represents this building of bridges, identifying key stakeholders, not just stakeholders, also uh, organizations, persons, um, uh, institutions, and facilitate collaboration uh, and engaging in them uh, also with the two-way communication. So we can also get the feedback, what we've done good, what we can improve, uh, and, and, and vice versa. And then how, how do we do it? Um, Take into consideration that we are in the fourth month of the project, so this is uh, this is very live uh, matter. Also, this is the plan, and uh, we will be looking at it every six months and adjusting it here and there, um, and and hopefully finding the the magic formula um, that really works for our project because there is no universal way on how to do it. Um, what we really focus is, is knowing our target audiences, where they are, what, what is their approach to, uh, uh, to the gender equity, how do they uh, understand gender equity, how do they understand innovation, uh, where can we reach them? Um, if I give you a very uh, plain, maybe stupid example, if we want to reach uh, European Commissioner Gabriel, uh, it's probably, we probably won't do that by, uh, by, by uh, posting just one post on our Facebook page, but we need to utilize different approaches. So this goes then to choosing the channels and the tools to communicate. And uh, many target audiences means very complex uh, uh, complex, uh, complex communication ecosystem that we will be utilizing. Anthony already mentioned that we are all over social media. Um, there is one platform we are not on yet, that's TikTok, but uh, let's see, maybe uh, by the end of the, the project, we'll also uh, engage there. Um, but yeah, using the channels and using, using the tool. And then really, really important and what really put a lot of focus on is basically the accessibility of the work we do. Uh, which on one hand means translating scientific, academic and project management uh, jargon into easy to understand language, but this easy to understand language does not mean simplifying things. We're not underestimating anyone or thinking that our work uh, could not be, uh, is too complex. Uh, quite the opposite. We are uh, we are uh, um, investing a lot of effort and resources to uh, to say the, uh, the the what's called, what we use the jargon for in a language that's uh, reachable to anyone. Because what we are doing is uh, equally important for all the members of our societies. And now quickly, just uh, uh, two last things. So our our channels are the website, the social media, events like this. And in the last part uh, of the project also, uh, we will put a lot of focus on endorsement of the tools and the project results that we will create. And uh, some of the uh, tools that we will be using, and I only I only listed here the uh, the the most interesting one. Let's call them like that. Are the testimonials um, presenting the impact uh, through the through the point of view of those who will be participating in the project, uh, sharing good practices 
uh, not only from our project, but also from sister projects and other initiatives out there, because we feel that we are a part of the uh, global community working towards gender equity, and we want to contribute to that, not only by sending out, but also to uh, collecting and sharing uh, the, the, the body of knowledge that is existing in the area. Video storytelling. You probably know the expression that uh, uh, a visual picture is worth thousand, wo a thousand words. Well, there was a uh, there was a research that identified that one video uh, represents 1.8 million of word, uh, uh, words. So yeah, we will be doing video storytelling to present uh, the project results and uh, to address the target uh, groups and stakeholders. And the uh, infographics are, are uh, evergreen um, tool to present different uh, uh, complex, uh, complex uh, results, researchers' numbers, and also how to uh, how to do something because we are in a point A, we will go to point B, please use our tool together, but there are a lot of nuances and, and tips and tricks on how to do that and we also want to focus um, on that. But yeah, like Anthony said, in a year's time, uh, we'll be happy to report what worked, what did work, and also um, maybe dive more into the details about communication of these kind of projects. Thank you. Thank you, Boris. And uh, I have a very special announcement to make uh, alongside what Borat said, and that is today we are launching the Equals EU newsletter. And so you can sign up today. This gives you the latest and greatest uh, when it comes to gender, uh, gender inclusive innovation, and it gives it to you right into your inbox. So please scan this code or check us out on our website at equals-eu.org uh, slash newsletter. This is a real uh, useful opportunity for anyone involved in these kinds of issues because it keeps evolving your thinking. It keeps uh, challenging your expectations so you don't get into kind of old fashioned ways of approaching things. You're constantly trying to renew the way you're approaching some of the very challenging issues that we have to face uh, as a society and especially in this issue of gender equality. So I wanna just encourage everyone, please sign up today. This gives you a really uh, key opportunity to get in before that first issue is even issued so you won't miss a thing. Uh, I also want to highlight some of the stuff that Borat said because what he's uh, contributing to this project is so valuable in terms of our ability to learn from each other. Uh, one of the things I've really gotten out of some of the social media work that Borat and his team has done is I've learned things I never would have found any other way. The things that he's putting out on the Equals EU social media are not things you can learn in a classroom. It's not things you can even learn listening to a conference presentation. It's knowledge in as bite-sized bit as possible. And he doesn't lose the complexity or the nuance of what he's trying to say. He doesn't lose the message. And that storytelling thing uh, issue that he was talking about is absolutely critical and something that he really treats seriously. So that way, when we're learning from uh, this work, uh, we first of all, uh, it's uh, coming from a vetted source, it's coming from a source that is, uh, is uh, based on science, it's based on research. And then secondly, it tells a story so that we can connect with it on an individual level. And I think that's where your contribution to this project becomes absolutely invaluable. So I see we have a few minutes yet until the end of the session. I want to thank everybody for taking the time to attend. Um, and I think everybody who's out there uh, watching it stream, I would really encourage you as well. Please sign up for the newsletter. It's absolutely free. We're going to continue running it for years to come. So it's something that you will continue to benefit from uh, for, uh, for the future. Um, if you guys have any questions, I see there's a few attendees uh, in the present or in the uh, in the session. If you guys have questions, throw them in the chat or throw them in the Q and A, and we can try to uh, field those questions. This is your opportunity to pick some of the greatest minds that are out there. Uh, not mine, but certainly my colleagues are. I've got the greatest minds that you can uh, you can query. So if you have any of those questions or you just have thoughts that you want to reflect on please pop them into the Q&A. If I don't see anything in the next minute, we will let this session come to a close. 
All right. Well, you guys have our contact information. Uh, you have our websites. You know where to follow us on social media equals underscore EU or equals dash EU. We are across the board with the exception, as Dor Borat mentioned, TikTok. But we're going to be coming to TikTok soon. I'll promise you that. I'm going to push for that. And I'll make all of our uh, all of our professors and all of our academics uh, reenact hilarious videos so that we can get you guys engaged and have a really important message at the bottom of that, which is all about uh, bringing women and girls into innovation. Thank you guys so much for taking the time today for engaging with this issue. And I hope we get to see one another online at a later date. Have a great day. Oh. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.